Gonna, okay, sweet, we're recording now. Um, so, hello everybody, and welcome to our first talk of the year with the lovely girls from Pepic. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Pepic, yes? Yeah, yeah okay, wasn't there, sure. Um, so, for those who do not know Pepic, they are a four-piece band from Limerick. Um, and they started in 2017 um, and came together through Music Generation, I believe, in Limerick. Mm -hmm. um, so they're unreal, as you should all know. Um, and we're really excited to have them here to talk to us today. Um, so um, I'm going to get underway with questions. For the first one, we actually put up an um, Instagram uh, question like for people to submit their questions and um, we had about three one of them was Anna yeah. why are you so sexy <laughs> and then I think another one was um it was actually about the name and we were, the person was wondering where does it come from and like what was the idea behind it if either of you want to take that Anna do you want to take that one <laughs> yeah I can take this one this one's always a funny one to answer um so it was literally the night before our first our first gig um and we were stressing practicing the the guy who runs um the place where we had our first gig marty he texted us being like look we need a name to put on the post <laughs> so we were all gathered in in our drummer laura's place and um, because that's where we do most of our practices and there was this like ceramic pig like a um like a the coin pig box pig? yeah like a, pig, okay. a piggy bank like and uh it had this cow print pattern on it so we were kind of like haha cow pig and then we just were like pow pig so <laughs> I think someone misheard something and yeah. we were like yeah whatever yeah know, it'll fun. just be for tonight we yeah <laughs> no way this name will stick and then like three years later we're still called cow pig so <laughs> we're stuck with it. <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because like some people are like yeah it's like it's like this really deep name it's like prisoner of war pig you know and the pig stands for like police and we're like oh man it's literally no. just this surrounding yeah, no. yeah. yeah. that's i love that that's excellent usually people have very boring story about their name so you know <laughs> um and yeah i was wondering if you wanted to chat about music generation because i i i'm i'm from galway um and as far as i'm aware there was no music generation when i was growing up um, so as a band that formed through that, what are your thoughts on it? Or like, what was your experience? Um, well, we we met through their Saturday morning programs. They have like, they do lessons and they go to schools. Um, but they also provide the like a service on Saturday morning where like they have like a big building and like a load of like teenagers like go and congregate there to like form little groups to write songs. And it's it's quite angsty a lot of the time where it can be like yeah it's cool I really loved it there and I still would love to go back um, and basically just there's a load of tutors who are in bands themselves and they help you and they gave us the opportunity to record that's our first CP they were like we were playing a few of our songs and like being probably too loud um because we were all like no, screaming and screeching as we do <laughs> um so you're we probably being a little annoying to the other people there but then I don't know if they they were like fuck it let's record you and then we did and then we got gigs so yeah love music gen love everyone there very cool it's cool that they have like a studio that you guys can use um. yeah they have like they have um it's a studio but it's not like one that has a sound booth or anything but it's like it's pretty cool like they use like smaller rooms as like the sound booths for like vocals and stuff but like they have all the equipment there so like even if someone went and didn't have any instruments there would be like a ukulele or something lying around that you mm. can use like either whack or you know try play <laughs> Makes cool. sense. It's quite cool. Yeah, it's, a, it's that's a, good. It's been very accessible, it's obviously, for everyone. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's just such a good thing when you're like a kid and when you yeah. don't even know how to write or like, but you're really interested in it and want to make like friends or hope yeah. you find a band. I don't know. We definitely got lucky. Yeah, we did. Like in fairness, um, yeah. 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 Um. Okay. Sweet. And so you formed during school. Um, it was uh, during secondary school yes I assume yeah mm -hmm. um, have you found that like anything has changed as you've all kind of moved on to college or moved away from home or is anything different in how you like work together 
Um, definitely, mostly because, I mean, during our first year of college, Leah was also doing her leaving cert. So we kind of took a, a big break, to be honest. We limited the amount of gigs that we did and we were break, all- Break, but we still played like- Yeah, we still played. But, like, <laughs> a lot of gigs. I think, I think like when I mean big break, I mean, we weren't like practicing every weekend yeah. or like, you know, doing gigs as often as we would have um, in, in what was fifth year for me and, and sixth year even. Uh, but I think- we, we were always like okay you know what we're gonna have festivals this summer after Leah's done her leaving cert and yeah. we've done first year of college and then when we're all in college like college is so flexible and we'll be able, we'll be able to just like meet and you know we'll have our license and it's just gonna be you know we're gonna be yeah. our 20s we'll all be so young yeah we're being in band all that I'm a tour yeah we were gonna have a tour we're gonna release this album and then uh I don't know if you've noticed but like something like problem to that at the moment yeah just just a small little issue there but um I don't know it's definitely been interesting uh I think everything to do with the band has been put a little bit more on hold um but now that things have settled into some sort of a routine even though it is like lockdown reopening um, restrictions like we're, we're, we're just gonna have to find new ways to go around it so yeah and in, in terms of things changing from secondary school to college the biggest change was COVID which was the most <laughs> okay. unexpected you know um but I think I think it does require a lot more commitment um as well not only just because of COVID but because now I live in Dublin um so college works so much college different it feels a lot more like intensive intensive but like I want to do this like I yeah. want to do well like I'm paying to get a degree yeah. and like I might as well you know or like student fees I don't know how oh, I don't really properly know <laughs> yeah well, I do but like you know what I mean it's, yeah it's all a weird thing and um, but yeah no you're going to get a degree you know and you know, leaving cert was really like clearly necessary, but there's a lot more. This feels a lot more real. Yeah, that's fair. And you clearly care a lot about your course, which is cool. Yeah, <laughs> which is important. And um, so yeah, Corona and COVID. Oh, sorry, one second. No, you're good. <laughs> corona and um the pandemic and everything has obviously kind of put a hold on some of your plans. But mm. how did you guys find um lockdown as a band or as individuals? Like, were you writing more or less or different ideas um I'll, I'll speak about my own personal experience and then Leah can jump in with her but... <laughs> I'm sorry about that I just <laughs> got <laughs> pasta <laughs> <laughs> nice snack <fair> enough. yeah <laughs> um in terms of in terms of writing I think whenever I came home uh like when lockdown first came that was like the end of my first year of college so that was that was crazy right like obviously I feel like everyone's first year there's well usually maybe not for this year's first years although I'm sure they'll still have some kind of um crazy college year but uh, yeah yeah <laughs> um, yeah I think I think first year is always like this kind of crazy year for for everyone who goes into college just because you meet so many new people and you experience so many new firsts and like for me, I was living on my own, which was also, you know, this huge change in, in independence for me. So like there was a lot going on. And because of that, I feel like I didn't write at all. But then when I went back home, like it was suddenly like I was just processing everything. And it meant that I was sitting at like and I, I have an acoustic guitar, but I use my brother's because his is just nicer. And like I remember just like sitting down there and I was just like, oh, getting all these ideas out. So that was really nice. It was nice to take what I thought was going to be a two week break during lockdown um but then yeah as lockdown has continued it's it's mostly just been everyone else's lockdown I think um I think you know creative inspiration some of it is maybe for some people it's like practicing it every day and and going towards it but for me it's like I wouldn't really write unless I feel like I have something that I need to get out as you know cliche and artistic <laughs> as friends, um that's that's really how I write so I haven't been doing a lot just because not a lot really has happened since yeah, that's right. quarantine has started but it's just been a lot of like I mean I got some really nice sweatpants in H&M the other day you're ready for right about that <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so I don't know it's a lot of like study and like Netflix and 
I'm glad to be living with my friends so we've been um hanging out together uh but yeah otherwise otherwise I think it's just locked down as depressing as that sounds you know yeah yeah. what about you Leah um I found writing so difficult I've barely been able to do any I've like done little bits and I feel like I definitely have ideas that will eventually come out but Mm -hmm. writing's been quite difficult and like everyone you know Mm -hmm. with lockdown mental health mental health really like so stuff just happens and like stuff is it just gets bad or whatever so that's kind of been mostly what I've been I don't know up to I started watching a new new tv shows (laughs) I did work (laughs) I mostly just hung around with my girlfriend to be honest um but just kind of like yeah when it was like when you could see friends I saw friends like responsibly um (laughs) um, yeah so I don't know like like everyone's I wouldn't say it's been too special but got through it we'll get through it again yeah. Only six weeks, um, so yeah you were saying about writing and stuff and in general like pre-lockdown or whatever um you guys when you're playing <clears throat> excuse me sorry you switch instruments and you're changing the lead vocals and everything um so in terms of writing the creative process is that always like a goal to be mixing it up or is it just kind of someone who comes up with an idea and we'll go with that or how do you generally start your creative process I mean when it comes to like making different things or things differently it's more so like it is what we're interested in like pursuing musically but also it's like um like I would be personally like I'm kind of bored of what I was writing just there I'd like to switch it up if that means like tempo change or if that means like I don't know but yeah usually I'd be pretty much like writing most days but like these what this time not really but that's okay yeah that's totally fine yeah. <laughs> what about you Anna um I think uh you mean do you mean like whenever we bring songs into the band like how, how yeah, yeah like well like what is it like you all kind of take turns in writing the songs or like starting off the idea or like what's your general like process okay yeah yeah I mean um so like because there are three songwriters in the band that can kind of it's it's a lot right usually you only have maybe one at most two songwriters and they would be the singers but like I would songwrite Leo would songwrite and then Andrea who's the third person who sings would songwrite and even though Laura does not like to talk about it she's the drummer she also is like just amazing at guitar amazing at bass so like uh, the latest song we released intellectual she's actually playing bass on it and that whole song was formed around this bass line she just yeah. kept playing like um so yeah when, when it comes to like writing songs like that what will usually happen is we'll all write like the base of the song ourselves or sometimes we'll have like more recorded beefed up versions like Leah will will always have really nice intricate recorded ones I'm more of a like kind of bringing the shitty acoustic recording and I'm like yeah listen to this and we're all kind of like yeah you know um, I always feel like oh it's gonna sound terrible if it's just me and the thing I don't trust I mean, what I do you know it always sounds so good though yeah. like, it doesn't matter <laughs> sure, I trust what I do <laughs> um but yeah it, that, that makes it interesting because sometimes we'll like if if the songwriter has some ideas they'll bring those ideas and then we'll all try and fall around that but I think what's nice about us is that yeah we are always changing it up we are always swapping instruments um the whole swapping instruments thing it just kind of happened because I think we were just like oh will I play guitar will you play guitar it wasn't like anything intentional like when it comes to actually playing a gig it is a hassle like it, it took a long time for us to like understand how to um actually do that like we have to organize set lists around how yeah, or even communicate to the sound people the sound guys yeah like that can be quite difficult um but it always means that it's interesting and I think that what makes our sound so varied as well is because the bass will sound different the guitar will sound different and of course the different songwriters which would influence it the most um but yeah the the main way to wrap this whole segment up is someone will someone will write a song they'll bring it to the group and then the group will kind of 
find their natural place around it they might hear something themselves or they might take it from the songwriter and it'll take sometimes a song can take like literally a day and sometimes it will take weeks and weeks but it yeah. always gets there eventually I think you know yeah yeah cool okay yeah so it's very natural kind of process um and you mentioned intellectual the song you released um during the summer um would I be right in saying the theme of the song is slightly different to some of your other songs or do you think like the topic of the song like it's changing a little bit or is it just kind of what was written at the time like you're not consciously thinking of what your um your themes and your issues are or sorry that was an awful question <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> they're always interesting I don't know it's slightly more introspective like all your songs are a little bit but do you think like as you're getting older or going to college stuff like what you want to write about is changing uh I wrote the lyrics to that song and for me a lot like writing personally like for the first EP and for 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 a lot of the songs that I've written on um so it's a lot of them at times can be quite personal but then like sandwiched in between things that maybe aren't but like that was the first song that I felt like comfortable putting out that was quite personal um but yeah no there wasn't like a conscious decision of like writing for like I don't know it wasn't necessarily a conscious decision like I'm going to write about this it's just what was happening you know what I felt at the time and like, I don't know everything I guess with everyone is like what they feel at the time about something mm. everything like every song that we've every song that I've written are very stream of consciousness so mm. I don't know well they've all been <clears throat> they've all been pretty good so far so <laughs> um I was going to talk about next was your artwork and your videos because they're all very much DIY and like you guys all do the artwork and stuff um, so I know Andrea, does she do most of the EP artwork or is it kind of mixed or changed around? No. Um, like, is she the only person that does the EP artwork or do you guys take turns or? Well, Andrea's in, uh, like she's studying art in Limerick School of Art and Design. So it, it makes sense that she, yeah. yeah, does a lot of the artwork. But um, I think we would all have kind of, We'd all, we'd all doodle you know we'd all um so like uh for the first two EPs what we did a lot of the time was we would make them ourselves and the covers were all hand drawn and then we would laminate them and stick the CD in and it was like very time consuming yeah, so time consuming I'm selling it for a fiver as well like that was a unique piece of art <laughs> yeah no we should have yeah we should God, have I'd love like, to see some of them I know some of them are so funny and like yeah. really cute. and then some of them I remember like one of the ones I drew was like a woman puking out the words like pie pig you know, you know. So, <laughs> were really like, oh, yeah so. no I think I, there was a few of those I think of puking I know yeah. my friend helped me out once to make them because because I was the youngest and because I was probably I was in fifth year while everyone else was in sixth year one year I was like you know making the bulk of them and my friend drew one and it had like a leg on it and it was just so stupid <laughs> <laughs> it ended up being sold <laughs> Oh. No. There's loads in a few years though they're great they're very um yeah. 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 Anna did the Irish though for our split quadruple side single quadruple a side single yeah the green one. and your brother was it yeah yeah so I did that um artwork and then for our t-shirt as well um I did that one um but yeah probably for the album Maybe Andrea again. Maybe Leah will, you know, take up, take up the the stylus or yeah, something. Take up the stylus. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, so it's not, it's not <laughs> in the works, or are you still kind of certain at songs, or what's the deal with that? Um, we've recorded a bulk of them. Like we've recorded the bulk of a bulk of them, but um, with everything going on and with like things changing weekly. Um, it's been hard to like find the time because the people that are recording it we're recording are we allowed to say we were recording with is that like a thing that we're allowed yeah. to yeah. yeah we're here with we're recording oh we're recording with a guy Steve and Mike and it's from 
Stephen yes, Mike. Stephen <laughs> Mike. Well, I don't know. Like, I feel weird name dropping. Um, but we're recording with them and we're releasing through. We're allowed to say that as well, are we? I, I mean, I actually don't know if we are releasing through them. So I'm just, we should just say oh. Stephen Mike, maybe. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. But, well, I forget. Um, the been recording. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've been recording. But like, because they both have like jobs as well. Yeah. We school, and Anna has to come down from Dublin. Yeah. That there's a pandemic. It's quite difficult. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just difficult. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of components, but it is in the works and it'll appear yeah, sometimes yeah. soon hopefully yeah oh, I mean okay. I feel like every year we're like that album is coming you know but <laughs> but this time it really is coming um I think we have most of the songs written and uh, and recorded there's one song that has to be polished ourselves yeah. and then and then I think three more songs that all have to be recorded but then yeah yeah uh, it's always going to be a process and yeah. it's fine it's all good. yeah <laughs> I look forward to seeing the album um but in terms of your videos, um, they're all uh, amazing and really cool. And you guys do them completely by yourselves. Um, is there anyone that like kind of takes control over it or is it very much just pitch ideas and go with the flow? Um, for, the, for, for like the three that we've done ourselves. So for Rosalie, Birds of Paradise and Blue Manchild, we all just were like recording on like a camera and then I took the job of the editor again because I was the youngest and because mm. everyone else, I think at that point I was in TY and they were in fifth year. <laughs> so I was like, cool, I, this makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. And I edited them and they definitely could have been done better. But Oh, no, they're class. Oh, thanks <laughs> <laughs> for what they are. They're grand. They're yeah. cool. I really enjoyed editing them. I don't think I'd be getting any job as an editor anytime soon, but they were a lot of fun to make and a lot of fun to edit um they're like the amount of like content and footage I have just of us like standing beside trees is like ridiculous <laughs> your laptop's probably blocked up with stuff yeah um, that's fair. um I really like the one you guys did for the um hot press the Van Morrison birthday that was cool very enjoyable yeah that was yeah <laughs> that was fun yeah. it was another DIY yeah oh no that was that wasn't us we they they sent a proper video maker and it was funny he was meant to just record us like playing in in Laura's house and then he was like I have this big idea we will get a cake for Van Morrison it will be we were like yes yes let's go (laughs) let's do it uh so yeah it was it was fun in the end you know it turned out it turned out pretty well I thought and at the end of the video when some guy cycles past on a bike and he like waves at you or (laughs) something was that like did that happen just out of the blue or was that planned? Uh, it wasn't really planned, but the person that we were recording with um, knew the guy and was like, knew hey, everyone. can you go? Yeah, yeah. I literally knew everyone in Limerick. Like, everybody. yeah, I, yeah, he, so he passed and he was like, wave at them. So he's like, wait, we were like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, see. Um, so I was going to move on to gigs next and wondering if you guys had, was there a favourite gig you've played or a festival you've played at or like what was your best performing experience? Oh, um, <laughs> say for me, I just loved, I had never been to, sorry, I had never <laughs> been to festivals before. So like, just getting to go in itself mm. was like so memorable for me mm. so I'd say those would probably be my favorite like experiences but like Vicar Street yeah is insane like that we and that gig even if you ever if you've ever have you heard of there's a book there's a band girl band who we supported pretty big pretty class Thank um, you. <laughs> just if you if anyone ever has a chance to see them live take it like 100 it's just something you have to see like everyone in the audience just goes insane and it was like the loudest thing I'd ever been to most like claustrophobic movement. yeah yeah like the most movement like even thinking of it now I'm like all oh, those people in one space <laughs> <laughs> but like it just everyone was like moving and like mosh pits are like one thing and we were like up with our families looking down like Ooh, <laughs> people are <laughs> pushing each other 
but no it was absolutely it was insane like it was so good I loved it that would be my favorite I think what about you Anna um I mean Vicar Street obviously just was cool because of the venue itself and it's so historic um I think the gigs I probably most enjoy are always DIY LK ones they're oh, yeah. yeah they're in Limerick and they're in this uh college bar pharmacy yeah it's not really a college bar but it's like where well it is kind of it's 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 the it's the youth spot yeah, really nice. <laughs> where all the cool kids go yeah basically it's, it's a really nice place yeah um yeah I just love playing there um also the show to shows I mean I feel like every gig we do, I love so much. So I don't Yeah, the show to show summer parties or like whenever they have like a big lineup of people. That's always so cool. You just get to like meet so many other great artists. And it's not like, like um, when you do bigger gigs, there's obviously more distance between you and the artist. That's just how it is. Um, But like at those show to show gigs, they're big enough where you get a really nice crowd, but they're also like small enough where you actually get to interact with the artist and you get to like share a Heineken or something. I don't know. I think Yeah, whatever's provided. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yay. Hello Queen's like being like, we won't look if you take a can. You know? <laughs> Very cool. Um so mention of pillow queens um I was actually going to ask what's your experience been as a full female band in let's say the rock or alt rock um music scene or even in the music industry in general how's that been for you guys I mean I guess we're lucky we've received I I feel like nothing but support from like most people um, I think that the only like things that would kind of irritate me uh, would be like sometimes when like just random people are talking to you like after a gig I found you're a lot more likely to be like oh this is what I thought and like in not, not so like not constructive criticism just kind of being like that but you wouldn't really do that to like an all male maybe I'm wrong and mm. it's cool if I am wrong but like there's just been a few times where people would have like talked down a mm. little bit it has it's been very rare but there has been a few times where it's like oh great to see girls playing real music and not using like acoustic guitars uh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um but yeah other than that it's just because we're young but like it's because we started so young like we're 19 we're not like old we're we're normal band age now right yeah Yeah. but I still feel like people god we're such like teen you know those like child (laughs) actors are like people still see us as babies but like I think I think a little bit of that does happen I'd Uh, say so yeah Maybe it's working to our advantage, though. Maybe. Like stay, you know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, no, we're still I 16. I know, just pretending. <laughs> I have my meeting start next year. <laughs> <laughs> so nervous. <laughs> but yeah, you've had a generally a great experience. Also. Yeah, pretty positive. And we've gotten a load of, like, you know, any kind of, like, gig lineup where it's, like, women. Like, because mm. there would be, like, women-type festivals. Yeah. Um, like, so... That, that's always really good yeah. women are like you know non-binary queer people you know so it's all very cool all, yeah exciting well um that's all my questions really um thank you so much guys you've been great um I'm going to see if people want to ask some questions in the Q&A box now or even pop it into the chat whatever suits and Connor if you want to pop back on I don't know if you have any questions um but thank you so much guys you've been amazing um and a wonderful First guest, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. You're Thanks a great so much interviewer. Having us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was, that was great to watch. I really love that. Um, <laughs> I have one burning question. Is there a funny story behind Ode to Wizzo? Oh, that's from there's a movie, The Room by yes. Wizzo. Yeah. It's beautiful. If anyone hasn't seen it, they should check it out. <laughs> and afterwards, check out the disaster artist. Because that's kind of like about the making of it. It's apparently realistic, quite realistic, but you know, who knows? Um, but basically, um, I don't know. We had the music, and then I think we literally had a gig again, like in two days, and we were. It was like really early in our career. I don't know, really early days of Pow Pig. It could have even been before the name, but we were like 
okay this song we have the music we just need lyrics and it was like let's do it and I was like I'll do it it's fine (laughs) but we had just watched the room and we were like obsessed as one should be after watching it and as one gets um and I was like you know what I think I should just do quotes and that's literally what it is except for the nothing makes sense um I don't know but that's what it is I we give full credit I give full credit to Tommy Wiseau for writing each like line all I did was take <laughs> it and put it in an order and um, yeah I know uh, it's a it's a fun song to do live with the staff and with everything but yeah that's the story basically behind that that's we cool. always have to preface like this is from the room don't think I mean it wouldn't make any sense otherwise <laughs> no it wouldn't like everything is so like if there's no continuity yeah. at all like that. <laughs> that's part of what makes it so like funny though I feel like I've, I've never seen the room so I'm gonna go watch and then listen to oh one well, definitely should <laughs> don't watch it by yourself don't do yeah. that to yourself. <laughs> watch it with friends yeah it's way more fun yeah um, let's yeah. see. Is there any other questions in the chat? Yeah, we've had one question in the chat from Brona. Um, were you guys good mates before the band, or did the band bring you closer together? Uh, we didn't know each other at all before we. But there was one exception where I I became friends with Andrea because I texted her off Instagram when I was like fifteen, being like, "I love your photos." Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we became friends through that, and then eventually I was like you play ukulele and you write songs you should definitely come to music gen so she came to music gen and then leah was already writing stuff laura was in a few other bands like she she's such a great drummer i think yeah she's just wherever she is it's like we need a drummer it's literally that and she's like (laughs) all right i'm here i'll let me get to work you know no we're so lucky lucky. (laughs) um and yeah, and then one day, I think somehow it ended up that the three, like Leah, Andrea and I were, were all writing songs and it felt like we were kind of, we were doing well enough. And eventually, I think it was Tony was like, look, there's Third a girl. Music gen yeah, she, he, he was, he's a music gen, exactly. He's a music gen teacher, um, teacher and he said, uh, why don't you just get a drummer? You know, you're, you may as well move on to the next stage of being a band. So Laura joined us then. Um, and yeah, it took it took a it took a long while for the ice to break because if you're only meeting in that kind of like musical setting, um, mm. it you know it can be a bit awkward. But through like festivals and gigs, like you you do become really close and you do become you do become friends like as is natural. And I think we're all like pretty agreeable people. Like no one's a hothead or anything. So yeah, no, we're we're almost too agreeable. Actually. Almost, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What does that mean? Well, it's just like, I don't know, everyone's like, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, definitely we've gone close. And I feel like our humour is are quite similar as well. Yeah. So like good. that's that that's very good for us because a lot of like our social media, which is managed by Anna, um, it's a lot of it's like our humour. Mm. And it was just what Anna's humour and that was like representing all four of us. Yeah. So it would be like a little bit of a strange thing. Not that I don't trust your humour, but like, you know, I <laughs> clearly I do. Like, I don't know. It's just funny that everyone's kind of in on the joke. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we're all we're all rather like democratic, though, where we want everyone to be able to speak for themselves, um, which is nice. But yeah, maybe maybe we are a bit too agreeable. Don't worry, Leah. You know, next time I get in there, I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> We're fight, doing you know? this, this way. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> like that. I don't really like what you. <laughs> um, I have one question. In your song Mayday, is that the Boppet voice? You've like. Oh heard. no! It's um, it's you know one like one of those keyboards that you get like if yes. you're like I want to learn how to play the piano but your parents are like I don't know if I'm going to buy a piano <laughs> it's like yeah. they're like 50 euro one the where, Yamaha you know, you know the, yeah the Yamaha yes. is the exact <laughs> everyone one. has one it's the right of passage <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like on um, the DJ setting I'm yeah. sure if a lot of people go on like if they find their Yamaha keyboard they, probably they press it. the DJ setting <laughs> and find the three two one like all of it's there everything mm. that we use it's not an obscure sample it's literally <laughs> just like <laughs> unreal I was listening to it the other day and I was like is that the Buffett voice I couldn't tell 
It might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we only have one other question but it's not really a question and I'm going to pronounce this wrong Breno says come to Brazil so there's a oh Oh, Kian has a question oh he does yeah (laughs) how Um, did you get the gig in Vicar Street Oh, yeah, someone just emailed us. <laughs> That's how we get a lot of our gigs. People just email us, like, because they've heard, and like, that is that is such a lucky thing to say. Oh, it's so it's, insane! Like, like, so many, so many musicians, like, really, really talented ones, would have to actively look for gigs, and that's something that we're probably yeah. gonna have to do after COVID because you know it's gonna yeah, be about, there, you know, there's only so one. much of a rate way you can, like, go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, but yeah, we're pretty lucky, like it's kind of been a crazy like literally from that first gig that we played I feel like um it has just been like a, t- a weird weird wave we've just been riding um, which is nice but yeah most, most of the gigs that we get we'll just get emails or if we know them um they'll dm us on instagram slide into your dm that's a nice yeah. strategy <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hi. Um, so I think that's everything. Unless yeah. does anybody have any other questions they want to ask before we go? Um, nothing popping up in the Q and A. Wish I could do like one of those countdown things, like where my screen is, be like you've ten seconds <laughs> <laughs> for forever. Hold your peace. Countdown music as well would help. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, thanks so thank much. Thanks for having us. Can't wait. Great to- chat. <laughs> hear all the new music and post ga- post corona gigs all very exciting and best of luck with the future thank, thank you. you very much bye bye bye, bye. bye. bye.